Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this second video of our two-part series for installing WDS and creating a remote Windows 10 client, we're going to take a look at how we go about creating that Windows 10 client inside of VirtualBox and what else we have to have in place for this to work. So the first thing we want to take a look at is our networking settings. So I'm going to right click on my Server 2016 installation, which is up and running, and I'm going to go to Settings, and we're going to go to Network. Now, currently, it's configured for NAT, but it has to be set to Bridge Networking. And then, underneath the Advanced, it needs to be using the Intel Pro 1000 MT Desktop Driver. Very important. So, set your Server 2016 to use Bridge adapter or bridge networking and then make sure everything's okay also tell it to allow all for promiscuous mode say okay to that and with our server 2016 machine properly configured for networking so that it can see the client and the client can see the wds server we're now ready to move on with creating that wds windows 10 client that we're going to build using a remote installation. So let's go up to Machine. Let's go to New. And we're going to create a Windows 10 machine. Just so we clarify what machine is doing what here. All right. Let's go ahead and click Next. Go ahead and click Next. Create a virtual hard disk now. Go ahead and accept the default. Dynamically allocate is fine. Go ahead and accept that default and say create. So both of these machines need to be configured for bridge networking. So let's go into the settings of our new Windows 10 WDS install machine. Let's go to network. Let's go ahead and change this over to bridged adapter. Make sure that everything's working the way it is. And then change promiscuous mode to allow all. Everything else looks good. Go ahead and say OK. So again, I need to reiterate that if you don't have the extension pack installed for VirtualBox, for this version of VirtualBox, then this is not going to work. You need that PXE driver, which is only available inside of the extension pack. All right. So let's go ahead and begin the installation of Windows 10 remotely, pulling down the image from my Server 2016 WDS server. Now to do this, all we have to do is just go ahead and start the machine. And now this is a little tricky, so you got to pay attention. Go ahead and cancel this. And now you're going to get a message. This is the right error message that you want. There is no bootable medium. So we need to reset the machine. So let's go to Machine, select Reset from the Context menu. And from here, it's going to reboot. As soon as it reboots, you have to hit F12. Now, F12, when you press that, brings up the boot options. We want LAN, and that is L for LAN. Go ahead and press the letter L. And now your DHCP client is going to start to go out and find that WDS server. It's going to take a couple of minutes, so give it time. It's going to communicate, it's broadcasting, it says, hey, is anybody out there offering me DHCP? Is anybody offering me a WDS server? So it's looking for DNS, it's looking for DHCP, and it has to find the server, so give it a couple of minutes. So it takes a couple of minutes, but it will eventually find the DHCP server, and you can see by the message that it picked up a client IP address of 192.168.145.1, and that it got that information from the DHCP server, which is my DC1, with an IP address of 192.168.145.10. Now, I allowed this to deliberately fail because I wanted to show you what's going to happen if you don't press F12 as soon as you see that it's got the information from the DHCP server. It will time out very quickly. So make sure that when you see that it has found that DHCP server, that WDS server, 
that you hit F12 to begin the actual installation. So let's try it again. So I'm going to go up here to File. I'm going to do a reset. And again, I'm going to hit F12 as soon as it begins so that I can get back into that PXE configuration. So I'm going to type in L for LAN. And again, I'm going to prepare myself. And now I hit F12. Did you see that? I had to hit F12 as soon as it told me to. You only have a very short window, just probably a second or two, to begin the installation process remotely. So as soon as you see that it has con contacted the WDS or the DHCP server, go ahead and press F12, and that will start pulling down the installation files from the WDS server. So this is going to take a couple of minutes to install. It just begins the normal setup. It's a little bit different in that it's going to ask you a couple of questions. But if you wanted to do this completely unattended, you could. You'd have to build an answer file, and then you'd have to put it into the right directory up inside of your image. And you would not be prompted, for instance, what language do you want to use. Go ahead and click Next on that. Now I want you to type in the administrator and the administrator's password for that machine. All right. All right. So enter your username in the format domain slash slash username. All right. So we're going to type in cyber offense slash administrator. And now I'm going to type in the domain administrator's password. Now I'm going to hit OK. Now it's going to give you the choices of Windows 10 that you can install. We only chose to keep one version of Windows 10 available when I built that install image. So that's the only one we're going to see. Now if I had selected or allowed all those images, then you would see them all in here and you could choose which one you wanted. Go ahead and click Next. And again, it's going to just run right through a normal installation process. And it's going to copy down the files. And we're doing all this remotely off the WDS server. So using WDS, you could create a remote installation of any Windows operating system. So if you want to install Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 8, Server 2012, Server 2016, or Server 2019, you could do this process exactly as we did for Windows 10, and you would not have any issues. So the big question everyone's going to have is, well, what about Hyper-V? Well, it's the same process with Hyper-V. The only difference is with Hyper-V, you're not going to be using VirtualBox. So you don't have to worry about configuring those network settings or anything else when you're up inside of Hyper-V because it's all done for you. But you have to make sure that the client that you're going to install is on the same network as your WDS server. So when you create that client image up inside of Hyper-V, you have to add it to the same network switch that your WDS server is sitting on. And that way, they'll be able to communicate and the installation will install without any issues. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about installing WDS on a Server 2016 installation and how we go about creating a Windows 10 client remotely using VirtualBox and WDS. So if you have any questions or you have any concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.